If you like what you watch, then don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest updates on The More Show. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for new weekly television and radio shows. Hello and welcome to the show. Later I'll be talking to Sir Patrick Moore about his contribution to astronomy and the people who have shaped his career. But my first guest is Marcus Allen, who is the UK publisher and distributor of Nexus magazine. Marcus has presented his analysis of the NASA Apollo moon landing, which he believes may have been faked. Marcus Allen, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Kevin. Now, Good to be here. Thank you. Tell me a bit about Marcus Allen. <coughs> I was a photographer in London in the 60s. Yeah. And great fun. Interesting place to be. Yeah. But didn't pay the rent. So I had to get another job, which I did. And that lasted quite a long time. And then I got made redundant in the early 90s. So I know what it's like to have to look for something else. Yeah. And what I found was Nexus, Nexus magazine. It was Australian, so my wife and I had our 25th wedding anniversary as a trip to Australia, oh, and we found out what Nexus was about. And they wanted to get Nexus sold in England, so they said, Duncan Rhodes, that's the editor and yeah. owner, he said, give it a go, see how you get on. So I took a few magazines back with me, and it started from there. And I thought, how do you sell a magazine? <laughs> well, you go around to shops, and that's what we did. And over the years, it's developed, and uh, we now sell approaching 15,000 copies an issue. So there's a big readership. A lot of people like what's in Nexus. Absolutely, and there's a massive worldwide readership as well, isn't there? It's huge. Yeah. Worldwide. I mean, what, what sort of figures are we talking? There's the Australian edition, there's the New Zealand edition, American edition, right. and there's foreign language editions, French, Italian, German. Okay. And I would say readership is about a quarter of a million okay. around the world. So it's, it's well read and respected. Right. Tell me a bit about your photography then. I mentioned I was a photographer in London in the 1960s where I, I used quite a lot of very, very good equipment. Amongst yeah. them, the Hasselblad cameras, as well as Nikon and Canon. And uh, the technical aspect of photography is what interested me. What was, uh, how do you get a good technical photograph? Okay. Uh, aside, besides from what do you put in the photograph yes. when you take it? Yes. And, I did, I was at college, London College of Printing, um, learning about the technical aspect of photography, which was very interesting. It served me in good stead, as we f may find out later on. Right, okay, okay. So tell me your theory of the moon. Did mankind, or has mankind, been to the moon? I would love to see the evidence for it. Now, at this point, most people will say, well, there's plenty of evidence. You've got the astronauts, you've got the books, the films, all the interviews, you've got the photographs. Yes, the photographs. That's what most people will hold up as evidence for man having landed on the moon in the late 1960s. And I watched the moon landings when it happened. Yeah. July 1969, I was up three in the morning looking out of my window at the moon. There's men on there and for 10 years I thought, great, fantastic, what a wonderful achievement. Well yeah. done USA, you've done something which uh, a lot of people have wanted to do. It was only when I heard a talk by an American, as it happened, who, almost as an aside, said, oh, you know those lunar photographs? Yeah, they're fake. I thought, he's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Look, I'm a photographer. I'll get in and have a look and yeah. check it out. I found out the camera that was used was the Hasselblad, which was the obvious choice. It's a brilliant camera. The best camera. Best yeah. camera you could buy yeah. then, and best camera you can buy now. I looked at the photographs, and interesting that the more I looked at them, the more questions arose, like, how did this get taken under the conditions that we're told existed on the moon? Extremes of temperature, no atmosphere, the vacuum of space, the radiation that is generated by the sun. Right, well, okay, why, why would these, why would these uh, conditions affect the, the tape then? Surely they made the tape to fit those conditions? You would have thought so. I started looking at what effect radiation has on film. Now, anybody who's ever bought a, a, a roll film, whether it's a slide film or a negative film, will know that it has, it has an expiry date. And you think, well, why would it have an expiry date? It can't rot. Now, it can't rot, but it can get damaged by radiation. It's the 
background radiation that we have here on Earth. All film reacts to electromagnetic radiation. That's how it records the image. But there's also a radiation which you can't see, whether it's X-rays or gamma rays or any of the other background radiation right. that right. exists. We know it exists. Mm. That's why if you keep a film for too long, it will become fogged. Uh, it will get misty. That's radiation damage. And I thought, none of the, the Apollo photographs show any radiation damage at all, which is very odd because they were supposed to be taken on the moon, which is outside the Van Allen radiation belts, which protect us here on Earth from right. the effects of radiation. Well, of course, yeah. The, yeah but they yeah. don't protect anybody on the moon because there is no magnetic field on the moon to protect or to hold radiation belts in place. Well, yeah, but they must have known this before they went to the moon. Or obviously, they must, they must have sent probes up to, you know, a, a sample or, or analyze it before they took a man to space. You would surely. have thought so, but I cannot find the evidence to indicate that specific experiments were conducted to determine what levels of radiation existed well, why, why, on the why, lunar why, surface. Why not? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. There, there's a lot that is unknown about the whole Apollo program. Okay, so why would they fake the moon landing then? You have to put the Apollo program, which existed, uh, as most people know, from the mid-1960s through to 1972, when Apollo 17 was the final uh, mission, and President Nixon as he w uh, then pulled the plug on the remaining three missions which were due to go off. You have to put it into context of its time. Yeah. The height of the Cold War, the space race, which had been going on since... Uh, April 1961, mm -hmm. when Yuri Gagarin was allegedly the first man to orbit the, the Earth. From that time through until the Apollo program, yes. Russia and the United and um, well, the Soviet Union, as it was then, Russia as it is now, the Soviet Union and America were in competition. We were told the space race. There was also the Cold War. Who could generate the most amount of nuclear power? There was also the Vietnam War, which was getting very ugly. There were the student protests, which were becoming increasingly, causing society to become increasingly polarized. There was a lot going on. But, but even with those in place, to fake something this big with a crew of, what, 400,000 people working behind the, the yep. NASA scenes? Yep. So who knows what then? I mean, how can you have these, all, all, these car, all these departments not knowing this one truth which you found out? Good question. Good question. Now, a lot of people do question the Apollo program, but until most, most people will say, well, it's just ridiculous. You mm. can't keep a secret with 400,000 people. Well, that's nonsense for a start. Yes, there were 400,000 people working on Apollo, about the same number of people who worked on the Manhattan Project in the early 1940s. That was kept secret pretty well until the bombs went off, in which case you couldn't keep it a secret. In Apollo, yes, there were a lot of people working on the program, but they were compartmentalized. They were working right across the United States, from Washington State yeah. to Florida to Texas. They were doing the best job they could. They weren't involved in any But in surely the, the, the data that they saw and they received, uh, be it radio uh, signals and obviously the, the TV signals, someone must have known something wasn't quite right then. It's quite possible that they did. And why haven't they come forward? They have. A lot of people have come forward. A lot of people have said that there are anomalies. Who's come forward, for example? Some of the people that worked on these, these projects, on, on, on the Apollo project? David Percy is one person yeah. who, who has had a connection with NASA. It was suggested that he might check out the Apollo record to see if there were any anomalies. Sure. He found many anomalies in it. Um, Brian O'Leary, who was an astronaut, uh, has made statements which indicate that uh, not everything was as we were told. Right. You have to remember that NASA was a, is a monolithic, or was then, a monolithic organization. And what who, NASA said yeah. went. And who, who runs, runs NASA? It's a, it's a government agency, isn't it's it? It's a government agency, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. It was created by President Eisenhower in October 1958, directly as a result of the Cold War, as it happened, yeah. because it was trying to pr produce the the facility mm. to test rockets that mm. were not perceived as military rockets. So right. it, wouldn't, it wouldn't spook the Russians or the Soviets. So if you had a civilian organization, which is what NASA became, they could test rockets. They could do the things which the military couldn't do. They could mm. overfly, 
We'd had uh, Gagarin being launched in 1961. Was he the first, though? Gagarin wasn't the first, no. He's the first publicly acknowledged one. He was about the ninth Russian. The ninth Russian, so there's dead Russian astronauts floating in space. There are dead Russian astronauts floating in space. Right, right. Well, but we don't hear about that, well, what, do we? Have you got any uh, facts to prove yeah, this? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. Right. The, uh, their conversations with ground control, the Russian ground control in Kazakhstan, right. were recorded. It was recorded right. in Italy by two Italian so, brothers. So they kept that secret. To, uh, no, so yeah. those two Italian brothers were that they recorded what? Sorry, they were recording the transmissions right. between the Russian okay. spacecraft, okay. which were being launched quite regularly. Yeah. Um, yeah, not all of them successful. I mean, there's no harm in in having accidents. You know, that's what space travel is right. about. It's so, a dangerous. Place. So you've brought that up. Why? What, 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 what's the point in bringing the, the dead astronauts stuff? Is that so... The, we have been lied to from yeah. the beginning so about the whole saying. space program. Okay. The Russians were not prepared to come up front and say, look, OK, we got it wrong. America did when the Apollo 1 but got how could out. America lie about the, the biggest achievement of mankind? Easily. Easily. Because they had to be... America don't have the option of coming second to anybody. They had to be seen to be the first. Right. Are we talking about the American government here? Or, are, again, are we talking about a compartmentalized part of the American government? The American government is very compartmentalized. Very. There are very, very few people who would have an overall picture of what is going on, especially in a, a quango, which is more or less what is quasi-government okay. organization. Okay. If it was filmed, then, if it, was, sorry, if it was faked, whereabouts would the filming have took place? Oh, the filming was quite public. There's, there's nothing secret about the photo, where the photographs were taken or where right. the filming was done. Right. If you're going to go to, to the moon, it's a new place, somewhere that nobody's ever been before, you've got to practice. You'll build simulators right. to try to simulate the environment you think you're going to reach. They'd spent... And American you, descent so you're saying these from. pictures were from those simulators? And also, just yes. going back to the radiation I hmm. issue as well, um, how, how, much, how thick would the, would the panels need to be in, in, in the spacecraft to, to, keep them, to keep them safe from the radiation? <laughs> they would need to be thick enough to make the craft unviable as a uh, So it couldn't have carry vehicle. the payload? It couldn't carry the payload. The rockets, no rocket would be powerful enough to but launch. But surely the scientists at the time would have known this and they would have, you know, question okay. marks would have been flying? Yes, they would. Now, you have to remember another thing, that all the astronauts, all the Apollo astronauts were military. They were under military orders. Their commander-in-chief is the President of the United States. If they are told to jump, they have one question. How high, sir? So you they in, were you're, all you're military. in the Brotherhood, you stay in the Brotherhood. Is that what you're Basically, saying? Basically, yeah. And if they're told to do something, all right, they are honorable men. They are men who want mm. the best for their country. Mm. If mm. they're told to do something which puts them in danger, mm. they wouldn't hesitate to do it. If they are told, there's not really too much danger um, right. out in right. space. You know, get out there and uh, do your bit for Uncle Sam. Okay. They'll do it. Okay, no we're question. going to take a break there, but we will be back because this is so interesting. Okay, we're going to take a break now, but stay tuned as we're going to continue to talk to Marcus. And we'll also be joined by Sir Patrick Moore. Visit themoreshow.co.uk forward slash shop to purchase products and services from your favourite past guests. If you're new to this site, you can also catch up on the previous television and radio shows through YouTube and the More Show website. Welcome back. I'm joined by Marcus Allen, who claims that NASA faked the Apollo moon landing. We also have with us one of 11 Hasselblad lunar cameras that were made for the 1969 mission. Now tell us, Marcus, about this camera. This is a very beautiful piece of equipment made specifically by Hasselblad in Sweden to the specification that NASA supplied. And there's one or two points that are worth noting about this particular camera. Aside from it being one of the best cameras you could buy then, you can buy now, this camera has no viewfinder. Normally on the Hasselblad, it's on the top of the yeah. body here. There is no viewfinder because if you're wearing a spacesuit, you can't use the viewfinder. So what they had to do was just point the camera and hope they got the right shot. Right. It's also... So, so demonstrate that. Is that, was that. Where was it positioned? Was it harnessed on their, on their chest, was it? It would be on the chest here. This yeah. is where it's supposed to be mounted. Okay. So they would just sort of point it like this and yeah. press the... Now, the shutter is on the front of the camera. Okay. This black 
square here is what the shutter on a Hasselblad it's normally on the front. Yep, of the so camera. that's what they would have. But they're wearing pressed. space suits with armoured gauntlets. So aside from the fact that you can't actually see the shutter position when you're yeah. wearing the camera on your chest, yeah. you can't hear if you've taken a photograph because there's no mirror inside this. The mirror well, was removed. You would have felt one. it click, wouldn't you? You would have felt the, uh, the press of the button, no? You, well, you're wearing armoured gauntlets, don't forget. I don't, I don't think you could feel too much. Right, these are pressurised, aren't they, as well? They're pressurised spacesuits, yeah. You can't right. wear half a spacesuit. You've got to wear the whole kit. All right. The only way you can tell if you've taken a photograph yep. is from the little counter on the side right here, which will tell you if the... Right, and would they, be able to, uh, would they have access to that when we're in it on no. the suit? No. Okay. no, they couldn't see that, so they didn't know if they'd taken a photograph. They hoped they did, but now Hasselblad's a good camera. It's driven by a couple of batteries. So right. It's an electric camera, yep. and it's driven by a couple of batteries which are mounted in here. Okay. Ordinary D-type batteries which you can go down. They're made by Varta of Germany, the ones that we used. Right. Another point to bear in mind is what is the temperature on the moon? Well, I suppose, you know, in the sun area, you've got the extreme sun and the extreme cold, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. If you are standing in sunlight on the moon, the temperature is over the boiling point of water. It's more than 100 degrees centigrade. If you're in the shadow of the moon, whether you're in the shadow of a, a spacecraft right. or any shadow, you're minus 100 degrees centigrade. The reason it changes so fast is because there's no atmosphere. So you, are you heat. saying this would have affected the output of the camera? The, this would have affected the picture quality tremendously, yeah? Not necessarily. Not the heat of the camera. Not the heat, because in space there is no atmosphere. Right. And okay. heat on Earth, because we have an atmosphere, is conducted through convection. Right. Right. Radiation yep. is different. And it wouldn't necessarily have damaged the film. But it's very hot. Well, let's look at some of the pictures that you've brought okay. along with you. And let's, uh, let's go to the first slide first. So just, just tell okay. us what this picture's about. This picture is purely to illustrate the fact that from launch on the left to splashdown on the right, the only source of information for the Apollo program and all that went on is yeah. NASA. National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or known in the business as Never a Straight Answer because if you ask them to give you an answer, they won't. Have you asked them? I've asked them. I haven't got it. What did you ask them? I asked them if they could tell me some of the points I will raise now, if they could tell me how the photographs were taken, under the conditions that they were taken, would they confirm the temperature, would they confirm that the cameras operated in the okay. way that uh, they claimed that they operated under okay. the conditions they were operating? And so you've got no... Did you write to them or was I it... I wrote to them. Yeah, you've got nothing back. Nothing back. OK. So, Let's just go to the next re slide. Regrettable. Then, yeah. So, yeah. prior to the Apollo program, prior to the Apollo program, they were... Obviously, NASA sent unmanned craft onto the lunar surface to try to find out where to land. Yeah. You know, flat place would be best, rocky, not so good. And one of the things they photographed was these strange tracks on the moon. Uh, it was done in 1967 by a lunar orbiter. And they photographed most of the lunar surface. This happened to be one of the photographs that came back. And it was questioned, well, what are those tracks? Oh, they're moon rocks dislodged by moonquakes. Um, nothing to worry about, move along. What are they in your opinion then? I don't know what they are. I, we don't have enough information, but it is evident that there are tracks. There's a big one at the bottom, and given that the uh, photograph was taken uh, fairly distant, right. Right. it's about 70 foot across, whatever the object is. You can see it casting a shadow. I don't know what it is. But but do, do you think you need a bit of a background in astronomy to appreciate what these could be, though? It would help. I would love to hear somebody uh, explain what these are, because these are okay. not very common. And, and have you asked any astronomers? Yeah. And what do they say? They, they don't say? know. They'll, they'll give me the answer that NASA gives me, which is they are rocks dislodged by moonquakes. Which you're still not say, happy with, yeah. Given that there are a lot more rocks in that photograph than just the one that appears to have moved, and this one that okay. has moved has moved uphill, Okay. Um, it doesn't seem a very satisfactory answer. Let's go to the next slide. What we've, and let's have right, what we've got here, this is an interesting sequence. Any professional photographer will tell you that you can understand a great deal about a photograph by looking at the context in which it was taken. 
These eight photographs, reading from left to right, yeah. are sequential photographs taken by Neil Armstrong of Buzz Aldrin exiting from the Eagle, the Apollo 11 lunar lander. Yeah. That's what they show. Starting at the top left with Aldrin coming out of the smallish hatch. Second one along, he's moved a little bit further across onto the platform. The third one, obviously Neil Armstrong got bored with watching Neil, um, Neil coming out, so he took a picture underneath the lunar lander and then a picture taken of one of the legs of the lunar lander and then Buzz Aldrin obviously getting a little bit more out of the craft. He takes goes back, takes it again, moving okay. across. He's a bit further down the ladder, a bit further down the ladder, and then he's finally on the footpath. Right. Now that whole sequence, according to the NASA timeline, the Apollo timeline, took three minutes from exiting the door to standing on the footpath. Any professional photographer will tell you that, yes, this is quite easy to do. Yes. But it's best to bracket the photographs so you get sure the exposure is right. To take a photograph underneath the spacecraft of the directly illuminated surface of the moon, which is quite right. bright, compared to the shadow area of the lander, which is quite dark, you've got to adjust the exposure, which you have to do manually with and your armoured gauntlets. And could they not? No, they could do it. Hasselblad were asked to provide little levers on the yep. uh, lens, which could be moved quite easily. But they're manual. You have to do it by hand. You have to set it. Now, the only way in which they can work out the exposure is a little chart on the back of the camera, right. which tells them what shutter speed, what exposure, and then they have to focus it. But surely they would have practiced this again and again. Of right? course they practiced. And they would have... I've been, you know, it would have been second nature, no? They would have practiced. Now, anybody can take a photograph without a viewfinder. Mm, mm. You just point the camera in the general direction. But if you want to be 100% sure that you're going to get the subject you're trying to photograph, and if it's a person you don't want to cut their head off, you want to make sure, you would take several pictures okay. to make sure, maybe move it around a bit, just like that, make sure, eat one picture, picture, that's the way most mm. professionals will do. Any professional photographer will tell you, yes, you can take a photograph without a viewfinder, but you've got to make sure that you get everything in, so you take lots of pictures. On Apollo, they didn't take lots of pictures. That, go to the website. Go to yep. the NASA website. Yep. You'll see them in sequence. Right. They only took the one okay. on each. They had to adjust the exposure, adjust the focus, make sure the composition was right, and you don't believe they could have done that with the pressurized suits and, uh, and everything else that was going on at the time? The pressurized suits, yep. also the, um, the sheer uh, and anxious events. This is the first time anybody had stepped onto the moon. Yeah. yeah. They had a lot of other things to do. It wasn't just taking photographs. They had to get but rock samples. These weren't normal men, were they? These were specially trained people. These were all military men, highly trained, the best of the best. The best of the best, that's right. They so were test pilots. They were op used to operating under extreme right. pressure. And Armstrong was certainly a brilliant test pilot and could work under extreme pressure. Let's just move on to the next slide quickly. OK. The next slide is a close-up of one of the photographs that were taken in the sequence of eight, and it shows Buzz Aldrin coming down the ladder yeah. of the spacecraft. Notice his foot is not touching the rung of the ladder, so his body is moving, obviously, between the ladder right. and the top place yeah. where he stepped off from. What's his left foot doing? Shot out to the side. Think of it, you're coming down a ladder. Do you move your left foot out at right angles to your leg? No, you use your left foot to feel for the next rung. They're 10 foot off the ground at this point. Yeah. Also notice the highlight of light on his heel. Where does that come from? He's in shadow at this well, point. Well, where does it come from? I claim that it comes from a point source of light, which is what produces a highlight of light on a curved surface. It comes from a point source of light very close to the camera, i.e. a flash gun. It's a fill-in flash. It's how you illuminate shadows without overexposing the directly illuminated surface behind right, you. Right, right. That's, that's how it's done. But they didn't carry flash guns on a planet. Right. They didn't carry reflectors. 
Okay, well look, we're running out of time, but very quickly, let's just go over this next picture as well. Now, just describe what we're seeing there as well. Oh, I love this. This is, this is a piece of moon rock. As you can see, it says, yeah. with the compliments of the, United, of the Ambassador of the United States of America to commemorate the visit to the Netherlands of Apollo 11 astronauts. Whenever the Apollo 11 astronauts which went on a world tour, which they did following their landing, they presented the head of the country that they visited uh, with a piece of moon rock. This piece was presented in Holland. It was kept in the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam yeah. for about 30 years until the Rijksmuseum conducted um, a renovation project right. where they moved it. And it was examined. And it was petrified wood. It wasn't rock. It was petrified wood. And where is that now? It's still in Amsterdam. And it's been um, examined by geologists. What geologists? In Holland. Do you know them? I don't know who has examined it. It was reported quite extensively and quite amusedly mm. by the press around the world that um, a piece of petrified wood, which we were never told, existed on the moon. So why has that never become sort of mainstream knowledge? It would be a bit embarrassing to NASA. Well, it is a bit embarrassing to NASA to find that uh, <coughs> they couldn't tell the difference between moon rock and petrified wood. But obviously they can't. They and can't. how do you sum all this information that we've just talked about now up? I mean, how would you... I would say that there is a great deal of, uh, a great many unanswered questions as to how the photographs were taken under right. the conditions they were taken, given that we know what the camera looked like that took the photographs. The explanations given, or the lack of explanations yeah. given, as to how this was done, and why it was necessary to hide so much. Okay, well we're going to take a quick break there and we're going to be right back. So uh, it's time for a break, don't go anywhere, and we'll be right back. If you like what you watch, then don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest updates on The More Show. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for new weekly television and radio shows. Prove it, isn't Welcome it? back. Marcus Allen is still with us. Now, Marcus... Um one of the questions I wanted to ask you before the break is, yeah. if they've brought moon rock back from the moon, <laughs> surely that's proof they went? Well, yeah, a piece of moon rock could be like this. Yep. Um, yes, 340 kilograms they so brought back from the moon just... over the mission. And um, how much have you seen of it? Um, not, a, not a lot myself, right. personally. There's some in the Science Museum, if you want to go and have a look. And you know it's moon rock because it says moon rock. Yeah. Couldn't be anything else, could it? Is it as light as this? Because this is yeah. very light. That's, yeah. that's from uh, Sicily, it's from Etna. It's, uh, it's similar to moon rock. It's quite light, it's sort of volcanic. Um, a lot of scientists have allegedly examined, well not allegedly, they have examined moon rock. Yeah. What, most people think moon rock looks like that. And if scientists have examined that, then that's obviously what uh, they've looked at. But they haven't. Mm. It's tiny little grains, it's been crushed up. Right. And it's been sent to them by NASA, in yep. a box marked moon rock. So do you think they're going to find something wrong? No. No. But if we didn't go to the moon, where did all the cameras that NASA took up to the moon go? I mean, where, where have they all disappeared? All, all these specialised cameras? It's easier to disappear things. Where do the rockets go? Um, the only people who the only things that came back were the astronauts and the uh, capsule in which they came back. But why would they claim the cameras are up there then? Oh, it's easier to, to lose cameras. But um, they're saying they're on the moon now as we speak. They may well be on the moon. Uh, I'd love to see them on the moon, because well, can, then I can shut up and go and do something else. Can, can we not see them with a, a Hubble telescope or something? Can we not see the remnants of what was left on there? It would be good if we could, but unfortunately the Hubble Space Telescope isn't powerful enough to see something as small on the moon as the lunar lander, which is basically the size of a pickup truck. It's right. not that big. And the Hubble Space Telescope can see something quite small, but yeah. not that small. But there was a more recent um, satellite sent back to the moon called the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. I've heard of that, yep. Which was to re-photograph, yet again, the surface of the moon. You'd think they got enough pictures of it by now, but no, they've got to do it again. And obviously this is using the very latest technology, uh, the close-up cameras. And yes. I was looking forward to seeing the images returned of the and? Apollo landing site. Well, I saw them, unrelieved them, because they're just tiny little specks. And NASA, thank you very much, NASA, have put on the little specks what they are. So that's right. what we're supposed to believe they are. I'm sorry, I don't go with it. 
and it, have other people analysed it and said, yes, that, that is that? Is that or that they don't the have it. Model? I've not seen the analysis because I don't think they have enough information yet oh, on sorry, where no. the photograph yeah. was actually taken. Yeah, I said, I, I said lunar module there. I mean, that, that was the remains of, of, the, um, of, of, of what was left behind when, yeah. they, when they went to the moon. But, um, I mean, to do a hoax this big, um, surely, surely the, the, there must be some, this must have took a long time to put together. I mean, we're not talking just a year or two, are we? We're, this no. is a, over no. a long period of time, isn't it? It would probably have been decided somewhere around the mid-1960s, which was, could we actually do it? Don't forget, this whole Apollo business started from a speech given by President Kennedy in May 1961 when yeah. he said, we will land a man on the moon before the decade is out. Very famous speech. Yes. At that point, no American had been into space. And it also occurred six weeks after Gagarin's flight. Yeah. That was what spurred the whole thing on. At the time, America didn't know if it could do this. Now, shortly after that speech in 1961, two years later, Kennedy was killed. He was a martyr. And one of the driving forces behind the whole Space Apollo program specifically, was to fulfill their dead president's challenge. A noble cause, if indeed. Right. Whether it was technically possible doesn't, isn't determined by martyrdom, it's determined by physics. So, did they have the technology to do it? Mm. We're mm. told that the computing power on Apollo was no more than on a wristwatch today. Right. Well, that may be the case. It doesn't really matter. The point is, it was very simple technology. Well, what about modern day space travel then? Surely we can go to the moon nowadays, can't we? We can, yeah. of course. Uh, as I mentioned the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, which is an unmanned satellite which has returned to the moon. Um, the Japanese have re -photo uh, photographed the lunar surface. It's not difficult to get to the moon. You can see it. You look out the window, it's not very far away, a quarter of a million miles away compared to Mars where NASA have done some remarkable work. Why, why is it so difficult to get back to the moon? Uh, the technology of the 1960s was, most people would willingly accept, crude compared to what's available today. President Obama has just cancelled the Constellation project, which yeah. was the return to the moon. Even that was going to take twice as long as the first time. It just there is so many anomalies, there are so many unanswered questions, there are so many points about it which when you examine it in detail without wishing but, it to but be true. But surely uh, one of the reasons that we haven't gone back is due to money? No, money, money doesn't enter this sort of thing. No? The money spent at the... Don't forget all the money of, a, of the space, pro space program is spent on Earth. But a lot of people just say we barely made it. Sorry, barely? Made it to the moon. A lot of people say we barely made it. They had eight missions get up there, 24, 27 men altogether. And there was a lots of failures as well. There were no failures with Apollo. Well, Apollo 13. 13. Great. I mean, that was great, wasn't it? Hmm. They even discovered what caused the, the pressure tank, the oxygen tank on the craft to explode. There was a solder, a piece of additional solder had short-circuited something. How did they know that when they dumped the craft in which the short circuit took place out in space? It's ridiculous that they come up with this sort of statement without any backup or proof, and we're expected to believe it. I'm sorry, what, we don't. What about the uh, sort of other independent researchers out there who say that um, we went, yet what we saw was recorded, yet the team did go there, but we weren't allowed to see what they saw, because what they saw could have been extraterrestrial, or could have been ancient structures on the moon? I've heard the stories, yes. So, the stories of ancient structures on the moon. Um, there's an interesting uh, analogy on that, that the ancient structures on the moon are not what one would hope they were, which was a physical structure that you could actually physically look at and get, have confirmed by different photographs. It's an artifact on the photograph. There are lines on the photograph. If you're going to photograph a big scene in a film studio, mm. which is done at all the film studios around the world today, Pinewood in England and the uh, Hollywood studios in India and Bollywood studios, they all use basically, well, nowadays they use CGI, yeah. computer-generated technology. 
In the mid to late 60s, there was a very new technology which was only just being introduced. It was called front projection. Now, front projection, as opposed to back projection, where the image is projected onto a screen from yeah. behind, yeah. Yeah, this was projected yeah. onto a screen from in front, so the action could go on in front of the screen without shadows being cast. It was a clever technology. The screen that was used, and the, film, the, the best known film, one of the first to use this, was the film 2001, A Space Odyssey, filmed by Stanley Kubrick, yeah. where he used it for the ape scenes at the beginning of the scene. That's not, nothing secret about that. No. If you know what to look for, you can tell if front projection has been used. There is a line between this vertical screen and the foreground where the action takes place. If you look at those artifacts, mm. this is what people are talking about. It's the artifact of the front projection screen which when the image is enlarged through in, in Photoshop with extra contrast, yeah. it shows horizontal and diagonal lines. It's front projection. It's not artifacts okay. on the moon. Okay. Can, can you think, obviously you think outside the box, but can you think as far as to say that you might be wrong? Of course I might yeah. be wrong. Yeah. I, I, to be honest, I hope I am wrong. I really do hope I am wrong. Well, but what's it mean to people then, general public? that we've been lied to by the US government. Do you believe your American government? People. Do you believe your government tells you the truth about everything all the time? If you can answer yes to that, then this subject is of no interest to you. If you say I'm not sure, or if you say I don't think they tell me the truth about everything, then you have to pay attention to this because well, this is a legitimate subject for investigation. Well, then there's no way that, that um, the truth is ever going to come out, is it, really? I no. mean, I mean be because people would never trust their governments again, would they? They won't. All right. How would we know if what I'm talking about is true, the, the, the photographs? Well, are, are, you being, uh, are you being allowed to um, talk about it? I mean, wh why, ha why have you been allowed to talk about it? Let's, let's get to that. Wh why you? It's a free country. I can say what I like, as long as it's not libelous. Or slanderous, slanderous, if I'm going to talk. Yeah, libelous, yeah. if I'm going to write about yeah, it. No. Yeah. Nobody could. Why would anybody want to stop me? Because if they did, a lot of other people will stand up and say, oh, look, Marcus has been taken out. He must have been true what he was talking about. Okay. It would be maybe so, silly of them. So, what to try. message are you trying to send out to the audience right now? What, what are you trying to say Just based on your theory? Investigate it yourself. No, no investigate it. If, what, if you think what I'm saying has any degree of validity, Either, if you're interested, take it further. If you're a photographer, is what right. I'm saying correct? Right. Could it be correct? No. If it is, then you've got another decision to make. Where do, what do I believe I'm being told? What do I believe is the truth? Where do it I stop? It probably scares people to think like, like I think this, it does. You know. Not everybody would want to do it. Right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a complete pleasure. Thank, thank you, you for Kevin. coming on. For more information on Marcus Allen, visit my website, themoreshow.co.uk. Stay tuned because after the break, I'll be joined by a video link by Sir Patrick Moore. Visit themoreshow.co.uk forward slash shop to purchase products and services from your favourite past guests. If you're new to this site, you can also catch up on the previous television and radio shows through YouTube and the More Show website.